What is up you guys? Welcome or welcome back to my channel here on YouTube. I am so excited because today I'm reviewing the Hindash collection. Yes, the entire collection. So I didn't just get the Monochrome Lens palette. I also got the Boy Tears and I got the Eye Tone, the Lip Tone and one of the lip products. I did not know that the two lip products were a different formula or else I probably would have gotten both. But I decided to get the Peaches colored one just to see how the look will turn out as a whole collection. Now, I am super ecstatic. Hindash is actually one of the makeup artists that I admire a lot. I've been following him on YouTube for quite some time, and his signature eye look is what I usually aspire when it comes to my eye shape. I like that kind of lifted look, and he kind of taught me that. So when he first came out with the Beautopsy palette, I was interested in buying it, but I will say I was a little intimidated by it. Most of you that have followed me for a while will know that I like small palettes. Usually I like quads, I like one and done shades. And a larger palette where there's a gradient of tone, a kind of, yeah, intimidates me. It kind of scared me. So I didn't get the Beautopsy palette, but this new palette, the Monochromans palette, really spoke to me in a way that some of the other palettes that are colorful didn't. This is not a color story that I can dupe within my collection. This is definitely a new color story, and I am excited to try it. I feel inspired, and I have high hopes. So my expectation for this collection is actually pretty high. So here we go. If you've never seen a Hindash palette before, the palette is six pans. It's quite a long palette and this one has a pretty large mirror on the inside of the palette. It consists of six pans but it doesn't consist of six shades. As you can see there is a gradient to each of the shades and the gradient also means that all the shades are named appropriately. So for example there's Alter plus Ego and they're in the same pan. After that there's Match and Made heavy petal, heartthrob, anti and dote, and forever ink. As you can see, the palette gives a very pastel vibes. This kind of color story actually inspired me a lot, even though I don't have many color stories like this, but I decided to get this one. I wanted to get a Hindash anything for a while, and I decided to get the full, almost full collection that it came out with this time around. I will say this is how much I paid for the entire collection, and I will also include how much I paid in tax, because the tax came afterwards. So I thought that this was it. I paid for the products, the shipping, and I, to be honest, I thought the tax was included. So when I arrived at the tax portion, so I got an email saying like, you need to pay customs, it was about 57 euros, which is higher than a Charlotte Tilbury palette. <gasps> it took about a week to ship, so that was pretty good. And here's the thing, guys. A smaller brand, so an independent brand that comes from abroad, so this time around it comes from Dubai, the fact that they ship to Europe at all, I actually really applaud. So I'm not kind of complaining about the brand and the fact that I had to pay tax. It's all up to me that I pay that tax because I'm the one reviewing the makeup and showing the makeup and I just I wanted to get it this early I could have waited for it to maybe arrive at cold beauty but I decided all of this and yes I have to pay the tax so it's not a reflection on the brand that I'm complaining about it I'm purely using this information to get out to you because maybe some of you want to buy this from the website and don't know what the shipping is or the cost or even that there is a tax. I saw that Charlotte Hallcroft didn't have to pay a tax for the UK. So maybe that's different for the UK, but as a European from the European Union, I know some of you are as well. Yeah, I had to pay a ton of money to get this collection here. So keep that in mind. My suggestion would be to wait until it's available at retailers such as Cold Beauty. I'll make sure to put the price down below of all the individual products when I'm talking to the, about them, but I just wanted to, you to get a little bit of my background on how long it took. It took less than a week to arrive to my doorstep and how much it cost. But back to the palette. So I've seen Hindash use a palette like this for face and eyes. So I've already put foundation on my face and concealer. I set the face and put some eyebrow products in. So I'm ready to start using this palette for my face. I might come in a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. But I'm going to start with bronzing and contouring the face. I saw the little video that 
Hindash did on this palette and how to use it. And I believe he said that you can use this shade for a contour shade. I want to use all the colors in this tutorial. So I thought it might be a fun idea to do a night look on one side and a day look on the other side. That way I could also test out the pencil, so the eye tone. And uh, I could test out maybe these two shades, so the pink and the kind of terracotta shade as a blush and see what that looks like. So let's just get started. Well, I moved a little bit to the side so I can put the palette over here and that way you can kind of follow along with what colors I'm using and what I'm doing. If I'm going towards a middle gradient, I'll let you know just by telling you. So let's start with the color Ego. I'm going in with an eyeshadow brush but I'm gonna contour my nose with it. You know what, why not already go a little bit into the eyes? So on my skin color, this is a very light contour. I think I can even go into maybe match and mix the two up, so ego and match, and see if I can get a little bit more of a pigmented contour. That shows up way more. I will say that match is a little bit more warm toned. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of that ego shade, a little bit of match, and let's put that over the eye. Fun. Okay, I'm gonna go in with my contour brush and I'm gonna do the same two colors, but then on my cheek area. So some details on this palette, it's 100% vegan and I believe it is also 100% cruelty free, which is my preference when it comes to makeup. It has a 24 month shelf life and a net weight of 24 grams. The contents is made in Italy. I don't know what the net weight is in ounces, but I'll make sure to calculate it and put it on the screen right over here. It's described as a pressed pigment palette and all of the shades are mattes. What I like about the pan size is that the pans are big enough to put a face brush in. This is the largest palette that I currently own and have in my collection since my collection mainly consists of quads and one and done shadows and some Natasha Denona quince. So this is what we're left with. I thought that the shadows performed beautifully on the face and it was very easy to blend out. I like the light contour that it gives and I think that because one side is going to be my night side, I'm going to go in with made so that deeper shade and maybe even like bronze out the face a little bit more on this side and really get a stronger look going. So this will be a combination of made and match. You know what, I also like that this palette is made out of cardboard and the cardboard is a high grade cardboard so it almost feels as strong as plastic but you definitely feel like it is a cardboard. I think that the pastel pink packaging is very nice in terms of aesthetic and definitely appropriate when it comes to this collection. I'm going to use Alter to see if I could use it as a under eye powder. Okay, since this is the night side and this is the day side i think it's best to use heavy petal on the day side and heart throb on the night side i'm first gonna go in with a blush brush and i'm gonna go in with heavy i'll do petal on the outer corners of my face okay so that is that showed up <laughs> Let's try to blend that out a little bit. That is much more pink than I expected. I'm gonna go in with Alter again and my brush for under eyes. Just gonna diffuse that a little bit. So that is a very pretty pink. Then let's go into Petal and put that right here. Whoa. <laughs> Okay, that's a little crazy, but I, I kind of like it. <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm not bad at all. I also really like that there's sort of this shine, like the, the eyeshadows are matte or the shadows are matte, but for some reason I do 
see this kind of shine on the face and I don't know what gives it that effect. I think it's just that the shadows are pigmented in a way that it's not a like dead on matte or maybe it's just what I wear underneath but I don't know, something about it makes me really healthy looking. Let's go in with another blending brush for the cheeks and go into heart throb. I'll first go into hearts. And put throb on the back. Let's diffuse that with Alter. I'm really liking Heart for my cheek area. I love a kind of terracotta shade. And I'm just living for Heart, which is this area. This is Throb. That is a little too uh, deep for my skin tone, but I think that if you were a deeper skin tone, then this would be the same effect as what I have with Heart. I think I want to go in with a liner. I did buy the Eye Tone Liner. Let's get it out. The Hinage Eye Tone Liner is in the shade Brown or Intra. It has an 18 month shelf life, a net weight of 1.501 grams, and it's made in Italy. It's also 100% vegan. I think this is one of the more anticipated products of Hindash's line just because he really loves the Mumbo NARS eyeliner and he talks about it in nearly every one of his videos. So I expected him to come out with one of these eyeliners and it is one of these classic pencil liners. On swatching, it feels soft, it feels creamy and I can't wait to put it on my eye. So let's first start with the eyeliner. I'm going to map out the shape that I want with my liner. You don't have to do this, but I always like to start with my waterline just because and then I kind of get a feeling of the shape of my eye. I'm going to look like I'm going to wing it out and by the time I get about halfway, I want to drag it over my where I want my crease to be. Now, I'm okay with it looking messy. I'm not a makeup artist. This is purely so I can map out what I want and then I'll diffuse it with a brush. Now, as you can see, I have very loose lids and that's why it skips like that. I'm just going to work with my loose lids. And then I take a wet Q-tip and just clean out the inner edges. And this is what I mean with I don't really mind it looking rough because we can always clean things off. Next, I want to set this a little bit and I want to use Made. See if I can change around a bit of that deeper color. Then on the inside, I'm going in with Alter. Going back in with Made. I'm just going over everything I use the liner. And this is what we're left with. So we used made, let's use match next. Might as well use a color. I thought match was very light. I do think you can build it up a little bit, but that was very light. Let's go in with heart. It turned out more of a nighttime look. I don't care, let's do the other side. People seemed to love the Tom Ford look that I did with the 
smoky quartz palette so I do want to mimic that on this side and maybe see if I can get a similar vibe going but then with the colorful colors colorful colors in this palette so let's go in with forever I'm gonna go in with that blue and let's blend that in with anti using the same shades to deepen up the colors. Then I'm gonna go in with the Smashbox Cream Shadow in the shade Vanilla. I'm gonna cut my crease. I'm gonna go with a dot and ink and I'm gonna try to build up these two colors. So let's first go into dot. So usually I cut my crease after I add these thicker, darker colors, but I kind of just messed up. So that is dot. Let's put in ink. And let's gently blend those out. Then I'm going to use Alter again. I'm just going to put that all over the lid. I'm going to go back with the eyeliner and do a little wing. Let's blend out that wing. And let's go into Throb. And then let's go into Heart. Move our way into Petal. all the way until heavy. Let's do a light blend with Alter again. And let's do the under eye. Gonna go in with Inked and Dode. So this is what we're left with. I think now is maybe a good time to get out Boy Tears. This is a color fluid called Boy Tears. It should be some type of a topper. This has an 18 month shelf life. It's also 100% vegan, made in Italy, and it has a five milliliter net weight or 0.17 fluid ounces. This is sort of a champagne color topper, very glittery, and you can use it to amp up your eye looks. It has a high intensity sparkle, so it's not a subtle highlighter. So if you wanna use it as a highlighter, know that you do see glitter on your face. I wanna add this, the inner corner, diffusing it outwards, I think halfway. And on this side, I'm going to use it all over this bland area. I want to put on some lashes and then I'll move on to the lips. So guys, this is the final eye looks. This is my colorful side and this is my more wearable side. But before I do a final thoughts, I think it's best to do something with the lips and then do the final thoughts. So I bought one of the lipsticks, Manifesto, it says. It's an ultra thin matte finish, silky texture, hybrid tint, hydrating balm, sheer to medium coverage and lightweight. So I got the ultra matte one in the Call Me Peaches lipstick. It has a net weight of 3.5 grams. It's made in Italy. It's 100% vegan. 
and has an 18 month shelf life. The packaging is metallic and it's quite sturdy and it looks like a classic style lipstick with the Hindash logo at the bottom. Next to the lipstick, I also got a lip tone. I believe there's currently only one out. I got the lip tone in the shade Hush. So this is a lip pencil and it's in that same classic style packaging that looks the same as the eye tone. The lip tone also has an 18 month shelf life, a net weight of 1.46 grams. It's made in Italy and also 100% vegan. Here you see the lip tone and the eye tone next to each other. Both of them are pencils and the lip tone is sort of this beautiful brown. So in terms of a night look on this side and a day look on that side, I'm gonna line my lips a little bit on this side. And I'm gonna line my lips a lot on this side. Really take it into the middle. Then I'm gonna blot on the Call Me Peaches color on this side. It smells like candy. Hmm. And I'm gonna really go into this color on this side. Keep it till the middle. Okay guys, so this is the final look. Make sure to split the screen to maybe see the differences between the cheeks, the eyes, and the lips. In terms of wearability, to be honest, I think both of them turn out to be night looks. But you know, you go into these videos as a first impression like without any knowledge these is this is definitely a first impression I have never tried Hindash products so I do have some thoughts I'm using them for the first time I think it's best to go in order of how I used all the products and I used the Hindash palette for the first time this is the first time using his shades his formulation and as a face palette I thought it was actually um, sufficient I think you can get a kind of a bronzer slash Contour with these two first colors, which I liked. I think that hearts so this beautiful color over here is a beautiful blush color I think in terms of blush they are too Pigmented to just go in with a brush right away. I definitely would diffuse them on my hands next time first I also think that this one was a good setting under the eye. I think you can use this to take along with you for a trip, for example, and then you can use this for a face products. So I thought that was pretty awesome. And I do think the pants are, the pant size is big enough to use with a brush. I do think that because there is this gradient, you sometimes kick up a little bit of the deeper shades, for example, if you wanna use the lighter shade only, and you're using a brush that's a bit too large then you have the ability or you have the problem that you might go into the ego shade as well but the pant sizes are big enough for you to bring a face brush anyway uh, it's just you have to be a little bit more careful so next is of course the eye i thought these were a little bit harder to work with i think that both of the eyes they they turned out well. I'm not sure if it completely turned out the way that I envisioned this look to go, but it doesn't matter. It's the first time, it's the first impression. I'm not a makeup artist. So sometimes when I do stuff, it doesn't always pan out. And to be honest, I'm okay with that. Makeup we can take off again. And all in all, I don't think it's a huge, like a bad representation of how I used the palette. It just means that one, it's not necessarily a beginner friendly so in terms of shades and the way that they blend out that was fine so in that sense I think that this is um, an inspiring palette but kind of a little hard to work with if you're like me and you don't really know where to go with anything I gave it a fair shot if you ask me and I think that both looks turned out fine I kind of messed up this eye when going in with that water shade I wanted to give it a try. I seen Hindash do it with his Beautopsy palette where he uses the black as a liner. So in that sense, I need to work with this palette a little bit more 
to gain a little bit more experience with it maybe not do such creative creative for me looks and just do my normal looks where i just go in with a deeper shade on the outside and then just do a gradient smoky look that is my go-to so i'm probably gonna do that for this week and just play along with the colors i think that the blue and the purple are super fun and i'm happy to have them in my collection i actually think the quality is fine it takes a while to build up the colors and i think that that is what's meant to be so you're meant to build up the colors slowly you're not meant to just go kapow pigments and it's also the reason why i think it like even looks like a little bit of a success well on my eyes i usually don't use purple or blue the blue definitely uh intimidates the crap out of me but the purple was so fun to use so i'm hoping that maybe this palette will get me out of my shell and use a little bit more of the purple shade do i recommend the palette uh, actually yes i think that the mattes are pretty good mattes uh, i think that they were blendable in terms of easy to work with i do think it's easy to work with i think you just need to get over the fact that there's a gradient and how to use the colors i didn't really use any of the middle shades so the the gradient shades i was more into just dipping into the colors on its own and combining them so i'm not really sure if i'm using this palette to its full potential but i actually did think that they blended out well and i i'm still inspired by it so do i think it's worth it to be honest i do so if you were looking into this palette and you saw me struggle but you did like the colors yeah try to get this palette it's uh, it's a nice palette it feels nice it feels luxurious i would definitely wait until it's available for example on cult beauty because uh, this was quite expensive and a little bit too expensive to repeat do that again next time there's a hindash launch i'll probably do I'll probably buy it from a retailer as well. Next, let's talk about the eyeliner or the eye tone. This is in the shade Intra. This is a beautiful brown chocolate shade and definitely something that I needed in my collection to have this brown. In terms of pencils, I like gel liners because I have really oily lids and gel liners tend to set and they have a longer longevity. Whereas this is more of that classic pencil. I'm assuming that, for example, the classic brown liner by Charlotte Tilbury or the Road Jones, Jones Road, <laughs> or the Jones Road liner. I've never tried the Jones Road liner, by the way. But I'm assuming those are similar to this type of formula. In terms of it, it's pigmented, but you're able to blend it out. You have a lot of time to blend it out and you do need to set it because it's not really going to just stay there. You're definitely gonna get a little bit of smudging if you just leave it like that. I don't think that these are made to just do a liner and that's it. I think they're made more to smudge out. It does exactly what you want it to do. I thought that smudging it out on this eye, so after I did the line, even though the line skips on my eye, that's because I've incredibly, I always say loose lid because I have so many folds, there's a lot of skin there. Eyeliners usually do that skipping thing, but as you can see, you don't see the skipping right now, and that's because it was really easy to blend out. It was really easy to use in my waterline, and I actually really like this kind of chocolate brown color. I think it's such a beautiful and nice color to work with. It's actually pretty creamy for a pencil liner. I'm gonna compare it to my favorite one, which is the Victoria Beckham one. You can see that the Victoria Beckham one is a lot darker then the next product that i want to talk about is the boy tears so this is actually the product that i really wanted to get i originally only wanted to get this one i was so interested in it because i like amping up my looks for example when you're just doing a bronzy look so you're just doing a little bronzer in the crease I thought maybe you could use these boy tears to amp up your bronzy crease look. And honestly, I think you can. It feels hydrating, weirdly enough. So it feels a little oily and it went over the shadows pretty well. I do think it took away some of the eyeshadow, but I don't really care. I think that you can use this as a one and done. You do see that sparkle. It's not a high sparkle either. I tried to use the flash to show you what this looks like, but it's kind of hard to see i think this is a very universal shade very nice and if you use the eye tone together with this boy tears i think you can achieve such a beautiful look already i'm so interested in using more of this i don't know if i would use this as a highlighter on my face 
if you do want to see that, let's give it a go. So it's a bit chunkier of a highlight that I would like, but it definitely works as a highlighter. Let's put a little bit on the nose. And a little bit on this side. It definitely works as a highlighter as well. I don't think it disrupted my makeup. I I think it looks good. I am really interested in trying this out some more. If you guys are interested in this as well, I'm gonna try to incorporate it in, in my future looks. And maybe I can do some comparisons with it. In terms of size, by the way, this is my Charlotte Tilbury Mini Flawless Filter, and this is the Hindash. So it's uh, so similar. I think it's almost the same size. It's like the same size when it comes to uh, length, but as in width, the Charlotte Tilbury one is a little bigger. But it looks so nice next to each other, right? <laughs> so this is the Flawless Filter in the shade 3. This way you can maybe see it as a comparison color. Flawless Filter is way more of a shine without the high pigment glitters in it. Whereas the Boy Tears, you could actually see the glitters sparkling. And this is more of a highlighter than how I like to use my highlighters. I'm putting both of these in my top drawer just so I can get them in rotation and see how well they work with the rest of my makeup. Next is the lip tone. I think this is a beautiful lip tone. I am wondering if I have anything like this. I don't usually like lip pencils that are actual pencil liners. I usually like the gel ones when it comes to lip liners as well. But I feel like Hindash is more of a classic style makeup artist. Let's see if I can compare it to anything. Maybe my Iconic Nude by Charlotte Tilbury I'll put next to it. And I'll put my liner by Victoria Beckham Beauty. I have number two. Do I have anything by maybe Fawn Lisa Eldridge? Okay, this is a cool one. Lisa Eldridge Fawn. This is Victoria Beckham number two definer. Then on top you have Iconic Nude and this is uh, Lip Tone by Hindash. So the Hindash one leans more peach, I would say, like a brown peach. And this one on top is Color by Natasha Denona. Just to name a few of my collection, to compare them, um, if you have this shade, if you like the shade, it's a little bit more warm, I would feel. Then let's go on to the Ultra Matte Call Me Peaches. Yes, it's an ultra matte. I don't feel it on the lips, so that's really nice. It's really, it's not a drying matte lipstick. And I think that the lip tone and this lipstick actually go together really well. I wonder if I have anything in my collection that I can compare this to. I probably do because I tend to gravitate towards the same colors. So let's compare this to some of the lipsticks that I have. So here we have Fenty Beauty, Fawn by Lisa Eldridge, Olivia Palermo Santa Fe. This is Charlotte Tilbury Stoned Rose. This is the Hindash Kami Peaches. And this last shade is Natasha Denona's Kala. So as you can see, I tend to go for these colors. I think this is a great formula. I think I look really nice. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. I'm gonna end the video here. I think this was an incredibly fun launch and I hope you guys wanna pick some of this stuff up. I thought that all of it was pretty easy to use. Like this video if you liked anything about this video. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have any questions. I tend to do long replies, so if you have any questions, please make sure to comment down below. Subscribe to my channel if you like anything luxury beauty. I tend to focus on Charlotte Tilbury, Lisa Eldridge, Victoria Beckham Beauty. If you like any of these brands, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm really trying to get some good content out for you guys. Anyway, I think I'm gonna wrap up the video here. Thank you all so much for watching and have a beautiful day. Bye.